How's it? Welcome to the garage. So since I started to make these videos, I ran into a problem very quickly with storage. So the problem is I've got this old laptop that's only got a 128 gig solid state hard drive and that's what I used to edit. The problem is when I edit a video that's more than 10 or 15 minutes long, suddenly it, you can end up with a, a file that's over 100 gigs just in your edit. Although the size reduces when you're done, during your edit time that file can grow quite big. And I can't even use my laptop to edit with the built-in hard drive. So I had to get an external hard drive, which I can use as my editing hard drive. But that hard drive with the sort of file sizes that I'm looking at is going to fill up pretty quickly. And as well as that, I want to have a backup. So what the ideal thing for this is NAS with RAID. But I don't got NAS money. What I do have is a Raspberry Pi. Now this is a Model 2B, it's pretty old. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work, but let's see. And the other thing I do have lying around is an old external hard drive. So these two things together should be able to let me create an ass. So let's see how it goes. All right. The first thing you're going to want to do is get Raspbian installed on your SSD card for your Raspberry Pi. I've already done a video on how to go through this process. So I'm not going to repeat it here and I'll link it in the description below. Once Raspberry is installed, just don't forget to create a blank file on the Raspberry root directory to allow you to SSH into your Raspberry Pi without a keyboard, mouse, or monitor. To do this, you just need to create a blank file called SSH and save it. Once you've done that, go to your router to determine your Raspberry Pi's IP address. I've already done that. And then log into your Raspberry Pi using PuTTY. So you can log in as pi with password raspberry, the default for your Raspberry Pi. Now that you've logged into your Raspberry Pi, you want to make sure that you update all the packages already installed. To do this, you go sudo apt update, and this will check what packages need to be installed on your Raspberry Pi to get it up to date. Now that my Raspberry Pi has checked the packages, you can go ahead and go sudo apt upgrade to install. This may take some time depending on how up to date the Raspbian distro you installed was and when you last updated your Raspberry Pi. Now that everything's updated, you could stop here and just set up some Samba shares and you can access your media that way. But when I was doing some research for this, I actually found something called Open Media Vault. And Open Media Vault is a media server that's compatible with Raspberry Pi and it has got a web interface for easy configuration and it's got a bunch of features for sharing and setting up NASA's, setting up RAID. And with the, the web interface, it's very easy to configure. So what we're going to go and do now is download and install that. So to do that, you can type in this command. And this will now start to insert. Sorry, that just jumped ahead there, but I'll put a link to this in the, uh, in the description of this video. So this install will take quite a while. It's got quite a lot to do. And once it's done, we'll be able to set up and configure an external hard drive to be in to be a network storage device. All right, now that Open Media Vault has finally finished installing, now we just need to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So sudo reboot and let the Raspberry Pi reboot. Once the reboot is complete, we will not need to re-log into our Raspberry Pi. We won't need to use Putty anymore. We can then use the uh, Open Media Vault web interface to continue with the configuration. So now you can exit PuTTY. Now that you've rebooted your Raspberry Pi, you can use the web interface to configure the rest of the Open Media Vault. So enter your Raspberry Pi IP address into the address bar. Then you can go ahead and log in. The default username is admin, and the default password is Open Media Vault. So enter your details, and you can log in. 
Now, once you've logged in, the first thing you're going to want to go and do is just change the default uh, login password. So you can do that by coming to General Settings, Web Administrator Password, and enter a new password. So you go ahead and change your password. Otherwise, you will have open access. Anybody on your network will have open access to your Open Media Vault. Hit Save. That's done. And when that, once that is done, you want to go to General Settings again, and your Auto Logout, you want to change. Default is a five minutes, you want to set it to disabled. Otherwise, while you're working, you will find that you are constantly being logged out of your Open Media Vault web interface. Then click Save. So the next thing we're going to do here is we want to go and set up a share. So we need to go to Disks, and Disks show us the disks that are connected to the Raspberry Pi. So this one here is the SD card. And then this one here is the external hard drive that I've connected via USB to the Raspberry Pi. Now, this will need to be formatted in a Linux uh, file system. So if it's formatted as an NTFS drive or a FAT32 drive, you may have some issues and you will need to wipe it and reformat it as an EXT3 drive. If you don't do that, you may run into issues with setting up the shares and with if you're not using a Linux-based file system on your shared drives, there can be issues. Uh, there's a lot of overhead with FAT32 and MTFS that Linux won't necessarily deal with very well and you may also end up with slower transfer speeds. So you will need to wipe your drive, just be aware of that. Anything that's on it will be lost. So I've got my drive set up here. Now I want to go ahead and go to File Systems. And here I'm going to add the drive to the file systems. So this is just the, um, the boot and the, ba the balance of the SD card that we can see here. So I want to create a new system. There we can go Select Device and we're going to select the external drive. And we're going to give it a name. Backup NAS. Apologies, it's an ext4 format, not an ext3. So file creation may take some time. That's fine. We say yes. So the initialization process for these drives can take some time, especially on bigger drives. So just be aware of that. It may take a few hours to initialize a drive when you add it to Open Media Vault. All right, so now our disk is finished initializing, so we can close this, and we can see our backup NAS file system ext4 has been initialized. It's online. It's not mounted, so we can go ahead and mount it. All right, we've asked to mount it, so there's been a configuration change. We have to say apply. Yes. I found this does take quite some time. I don't know if it's just because I've got a Raspberry Pi... 2B, and this is more suited to something a bit newer, but um, it does work. It just takes a bit of time to apply these sort of configuration changes. Okay, the configuration has been changed, and now we can see that the backup drive has been mounted and is online. So now with our disk initialized and ready, we can go ahead and we can create a shared folder. So we can go here to shared folders. We can say add, and we can give the shared folder a name. So I'm going to call it video backup where do I want to create it on the backup NAS and I'm going to give permissions to everyone read and write permissions so everybody has good read and write permissions and we can say save our configuration again has been changed so we have to say apply yes all right now that the configuration changes have been applied to create the shared uh, folder, we can go ahead and add a user that will be able to access this folder. So I'm going to go add, and now I'm going to give the user a name. I'm going to give him my name, Chris, and then give him a password. He says save. Okay, again, configuration change has been made. We have to apply. We'll go ahead and do that. Yes, apply. Configuration changes. And now that we've added the new user, the last thing we have to go and do is enable Samba. So we can go here to SMB. 
and all we're going to do is say enable and say save and that will allow the, us to find this device on our network again configuration changes apply yes now that samba has been enabled we can go ahead to shares and now we need to add the shared folder that we've created over here we now needed to add that to the samba shares so we go add we select the sh shared folder that we want to add video backup and we're going to make this guests allowed to enable uh, people maybe without usernames to access this folder Other, otherwise you could you could make it uh, no guests it's up to you it's not going to be read only it's going to be browsable you can just normally leave these settings as is and we can go and save configuration changes apply yes okay now that that configuration change has been made we should be able to access this now from windows so if we open windows a uh, folder in windows we can go map network drive now we're going to enter the ip address of the raspberry pi so that's 192.168.0.103 and then the directory that we're looking at so that's video backup i'm going to say uh, connect using different credentials because it will be different from our windows details um, so i'm just going to say username chris which is the one we've already created into the password that i created okay now there we have it now i've got access to the bat video backup drive that i already created on my raspberry pi so i'm going to say new folder you can easily create a folder in there so i've got right access i'm going to say delete deleted so there i've got a completely connected network attached storage device i've essentially made an ass with raspberry pi now there's a lot of other settings and a lot of other configurations you can do using open media vault and there are tons of tutorials on the internet showing you all sorts of tricks and tips you can do with it there are add-ins to make it a plex server you can do a bunch of cool stuff but for now this is where i'm going to stop because this is now serving the purpose that i require all right so the nas was successful but the one big issue i ran into was transfer speeds now i knew that the raspberry pi 2 was not going to be the best at transfer speed because the usb controller and the ethernet controller are actually shared which means you have to share your traffic across that so i didn't have a great hope for it but in my situation where i can leave it overnight just to back up my working and my final video files it's not the it's not the end of the world i'm not going to be constantly working off that now so in my case it's probably going to work as a backup so that's okay but if you want something to work off uh quicker i think the raspberry pi 3 definitely the raspberry pi 4 they actually start to introduce separate controllers and that's where you can get a much bigger speed increase so if you want to do this and you can get your hands on a raspberry pi 4 i would definitely recommend that the process is going to be the same to set it up those all also have onboard Wi-Fi if you want, although because you're transferring lots of media, I would suggest still plugging it into your router directly, but it'll definitely give you a speed increase on what we've seen here today. So thanks for tuning in. If you like this video or find it helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay safe.